Hey, San Antonio, this is Rob for the Metalworks tonight, and I'm here at The Rabbit to cover a band that you've heard me talk about several times before, yes. Brings me great pleasure to welcome out of Boston, Trevor from the band Unearth. How are you doing, Trev? Excellent today. Thanks, man. It's um, definitely a big, big treat to have uh, you guys on the show. Uh, undoubtedly, um, I feel, along with many others, that you guys are probably one of the most prominent young up-and-coming bands, uh, metal bands across the country. So uh, thank you for taking the time tonight, man. It's good to hear. Thanks for having me. You know, so. let's, let's, let's talk about, I mean, there's people who are already know the band and really know a lot about the band, but for the people out there who are watching, some of my old school people out there who watch Rob's Metalworks, Tell us a little bit about Unearth. How did you guys break out of Boston? You know, were there any key relationships that really helped you? Because you guys are really spreading your feelers across the country now. We've, we've been at it forever. Um, we started in the summer of 1998. And before that time, we were all in other local bands. So, you know, I'm 27 years old. We've been doing this since we were kids. I wow. started when I was 14 or 13 years old. So all of us are in the same boat. We've all done that. Um, so we just kind of got ourselves in a good Good, good position in our region in the, in the Northeast. And then once this band formed, we, d we did a ton of shows, put out a, an, an EP demo on Endless Fight Records, and ever since then it's just been taken off. We got signed to Eulogy Recordings, we did a bunch of tours, and then uh, about a year and a half ago we signed Metal Blade. And ever since then it's been, you know, the pace has picked up, I and mean, it's been getting better and better. But we've been touring for a long time, a full time touring about five years now. And we, we actually played San Antonio, I think it was. 2000 or 2001 we played it wasn't downtown San Antonio but it's another club just outside of the city so mm -hmm. we've been coming here for a while so we we always love it here and I'll say on camera that I think you guys are probably the best signing that Metal Blade has done in a long long time really that's awesome to hear man that's <laughs> awesome thank you because I mean, we've had a long relationship with Metal Blade um, and of course you know we're always hearing all the new and up-and-coming bands that they're signing but you guys have really really stood out from uh, among the, the pack well, thank you so much. I love uh, the Red Chord and Black Dahlia Murder as well. I think those are two excellent bands that they they picked up. So let's let's talk about um, your CD in San Antonio. For some of you who don't yet have it, take a look at it. It's called The Oncoming Storm. Um, I'm a big fan of this CD. I was telling you before the uh, the uh, camera started rolling. The songs are killer, but it sounds tremendous on the stereo, man. It's a fine piece of work. You talk. Up, yeah. <laughs> we do, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about about musically. How how do you, what do you feel you're delivering um, to the metal masses out there? I think it's our own fresh brand of metal. Um, we all grew up listening to bands like Testament, Pantera, Sepultura, Slayer, um, and also bands like Earth Crisis, uh, the Dead Kennedys, Minor Threat, more of the hardcore side of mm -hmm. things. So we have that kind of influence in, in us to write with the metal. So I think it's you know. You, I forgot to mention Iron Maiden, of course. That's a big influence on us, especially the guitar players. So it's that style of metal with more of an underground feel to it, and that, that's what we bring to it. And um, what about um, who was working the knobs behind uh, behind the scenes uh, just to make it sound so clean and crisp and, and, and fat you know, on the stereo? That was at Adam D of uh, Killswitch Engage. We've, we've been working with him for years. Yeah. Uh, first, like, the Stings of Conscience. Mm -hmm. He actually was the engineer for that record as well, and uh, we did the EP uh, Endless with him as well. So we, he's, he's a friend of ours. He's filled in on drums and guitar for us before. Wow. So he's actually done a lot for us. and. Uh, He's a good friend, and he's great behind behind the board, and he helped us make a, a great record. Uh, there's um, a, a fast, I feel, pace to the record, you know, in the beginning. Then you guys throw in like this nine, this nice little interlude. I think it's track nine. Yeah, talk a little bit about that track, cause it, you know, we're headbanging. You're, you're you're listening to this heavy record, and then you go into something really subtle like that and it really shows how diverse of a band you really are instead of just the band who can just play heavy stuff. Well that, that song was done for a few reasons. Um, I think the, the main reason was like I said growing up we listened to bands like Testament and Pantera and, and almost in every single like great metal record there was a song that kind of broke up the sound of the record because if every song is just balls to the wall metal right. then it might get a little you know tiresome right. towards the end. So this one and you know wait our band is not about writing ballads, you know, it's, that's not what this band is about, we're just about writing heavy, hard-hitting metal hardcore, and we wanted to do something diverse, and our, our, uh, our bassist, uh, John, his, his name is Slow to Us, uh, he plays piano, he's excellent, wow. so he wrote this piece, and uh, 
we put drums up over it, some guitar, and I, I did some, you know, an underlying vocal track. Just, you know, made a song out of it, and we think it adds to the record. I'm glad you guys really um, aren't afraid to do something like that. I think some bands would kind of be like, maybe afraid to put something like that on such a heavy record. But I'm, I'm glad you guys went out, stuck it out there. Afraid of anything to do, you know, musically. So I think we we crossed uh, a lot of boundaries in this record that we haven't before. Even had Ken sing on two songs. You know, he, he did some singer parts, which isn't what the band is about really. But since we have guys in the band that can do certain things, we just wanted to explore them and, and see what we could come up, come up with. And I think we're happy with everything. You guys, um, let's, let's talk about Roadwork now. You guys have undoubtedly done some big, big shows in the past year. Yeah. I mean, really, really too many to mention, but big festivals uh, really have, have gone out there. What is the rest of um, 05 as we look already towards the summer? Uh, maybe even towards the fall. What do you guys got lined up? Obviously, you're going to support this release as long as possible. Uh, this tour is actually a seven-week tour, so it goes pretty far into uh, the spring. It goes into about April 1st, I think. So we're, we're doing this for a long time. Uh, then we take two or three weeks off. We go to Japan, Australia for a few weeks um, in, in April and May, and then we go to Europe in June. And then I think we hit the road back full U.S. tour end of June. I think we'll be back here in Texas uh, probably mid-July. You think you'll be headlining that tour? Uh, it's a festival tour. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not totally confirmed yet, the, the, entire, the entire package, but you, you will hear of it in, in the coming weeks. Cool. And uh, it's going to be like a, almost like a second stage type OzFest tour uh, that's going to tour the country. Let's, let's talk a little bit about videos. I told you uh, earlier that we've been spinning your videos on the show. Do you think videos are still an important medium to get the music out there? Do you like doing videos? Um, what do you think their impact is out in the market? Uh, I, I, you know, I think that videos are very important. Um, I don't think it's any secret that once Headbangers Ball went off the year in 1994, yeah. uh, metal kind of went, you know, took a nosedive. Um, and then this, you know, garbage became popular for, you know, new metal, whatever the hell it was. But uh, I think videos are very important. It gives people a chance that wouldn't normally see these bands in, in the underground live, a chance to kind of, you know, relate to these bands, see, see what they look like see what the band was thinking about when, when they wrote the song with the concept of the video or even just see, see the band go off live on, on camera and I think that you know that that's something that I, 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 I grew up watching you know I was 11 years old watching the first Pantera video you know and you know stuff like that really is important and uh, I think that you know it should continue and you know shows like like yours I think definitely help a lot too so it's great cool love, love to see it Let's let's talk about your website too. I was just on there um, today. I like the website. It kind of correlates with the concept of the cover work and stuff like that. What what can fans expect when they go to the website? Um, it's a good site. If you have a slow connection, you might be kind of <laughs> screwed. But uh, a lot of flash on there. But you know, dial up won't help. But you know, it, it's uh, it incorporates the artwork from from the record. It's got a lot of pictures from this the summer Nas Fest. Also, some pictures from the Damage Plan Hatebreed tour we did last last spring. Um, we actually have to put some new pictures. We have a ton all backed up. It, it takes some time to put it up there because we, 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 we do it all ourselves. Um, I update the news about once or twice a week, uh, all the show dates. I've noticed that you guys are always kind of putting new stuff up there for people to kind of yeah. keep tabs of what's going on. Exactly. You, 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 you try to stay on top of it so, so people know that you, you actually care about what, yeah. what you're doing as well instead of just going out there and touring. I mean, we have fun touring, but it's also good to actually talk back to the people. Like, oh, that, thanks thanks for the show last night or the, the past week of shows. It was, it was great. So I think that's important. Cool. Trevor, um, is there anything we missed, man? Anything? Any last words you want to share for the people out there as we kind of close out? Come see us live. Get get the oncoming storm, our new record, and uh, we'll see you guys this summer. Remember San Antonio, the CD, just like Trevor said, is called the Oncoming Storm. Take a good look at it. Go out to the record stores and pick that shit up. Undoubtedly, it will rock your house. Remember, you saw Unearth on Rob's Metalworks. Don't go anywhere. We got some live stuff coming up next. <laughs>